Hi everybody, I'm Michelle Rushing with Stampin' Butterfly. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I have another episode of Celebration Showcase where I spend a little time going over one of our free items in our Celebration catalog. Celebration ends September 30th, so that will be when I'm wrapping up my showcase. So each week, tune into my Facebook page and I'll share samples and tips and tricks. And then at the end of the week on Sunday, I go ahead and do a video and share how to actually do some of the um, techniques. So this week we have been looking at Feels Like Home stamp set and this one is a free stamp set you earn when you spend $50 with Stampin' Up. I'm a US demonstrator so if you are interested in placing an order and um, would like this stamp set I have my information at the top of the video and my well actually it's not there yet <laughs> it'll be there when I go to my desk view but um, it'll be at the top of the video and my host code is there if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me um, but right now, let's um, flip you down and take a look at the stamp set. All right, so this is our stamp set. It is an orange rubber stamp set. So you'll see it's called Kling. And I have some of them already pulled out, but they are on the orange rubber. And you mount them on a clear block to use them. And this is our stamp set, so it has a really pretty pencil drawn image. And in the catalog, it's on page six of the little celebration catalog, and you'll see some samples here. They made some backgrounds, they used it on a tag, did a little watercoloring and some fun quick cards. So the catalog is always a great source of inspiration. So make sure you check that out. Um, today, I'm actually going to teach you a couple of techniques. So let me open my annual catalog real quick so I can show you some of the products we'll be using. Because these are things you may have overlooked and never really had a chance to play with. So we will be using the watercolor pencils. They are on page 126 and there are two different assortments, assortment one and assortment two. And the colors I'm using are a combination somewhere from each. The other thing we'll be using, since we're using watercolor pencils, we need to use some stays on ink. And um, I'll go over that a little bit when I get to that, the difference between that and the memento ink. Then we're also going to be using a blender pen and again, I will explain that a little bit more as we get rolling in the coloring section, but that is different than our blends alcohol pen. So they're similar in name, but very different. And these come in a three pack and they are amazing. You can use them forever. I think my three pack, I'm on the third pen and I bought it maybe 10 years ago. So it is, la it does last and <laughs> you'll get a lot of life out of those. And then let's see if there's anything else we are using on this page. Oh, we're gonna also use some blending brushes. So that is item number seven on page 129. So we will use that on our embossing folders. So let's take a look at the first card we'll be making. Let's move that out of the way. You might need some grid paper. And so the first thing I think we'll, we'll um, show you how to use are the embossing folders. So there's a couple different ways. You can run your embossing folder. So those are my samples. Um, let's see, I have one just regular embossed. So you can run your cardstock. And again, this is white, so it's a little hard to see. I think if I tilt it, it's pretty good. So you can run it through and get that really great texturized look, but it's hard to see sometimes. So you'll see on here, I did this technique where I used the blends, colored it up to give it a little bit of color. And then this one, I actually inked the embossing folder and ran it through. So I'll show you how to do both techniques. We may not complete both cards, but I'll at least show you how to do those embossing pieces. So let's go ahead and get out our embossing folder. Now this one is the brick and mortar and it's a 3D embossing folder. And the way you can tell is it's super thick right here and um, it feeds through a little bit different. So I will kind of go through that as well when we pull out the embossing machine. Let's get some card pieces out here. I decided to change it up a little bit. So today we're actually going to use gray granite and it's kind of um, what I did on these earlier cards are um, crumb cake. So I used crumb cake on these and um, I thought it'd be fun to change it up a little bit. So we're gonna need our ink and maybe some bows. So I already tied some bows. We have this great package of Baker's Twine Essentials and it comes with all, the, all these different colors. So you have white, black, the very vanilla, the um, linen slash crumb cake, and then the gray granite. So it's a great uh, versatile pack, and I like to use twine because it doesn't make your card too lumpy from mailing. 
So I made a few little bows. You'll see it's not the same color. I used the twine that's more crumb cake colored on that card, but this will match for these guys. So we're gonna move that out of the way. And I think we'll just start with our blending brush first. So we'll take a look at how to do this. We're gonna ink that up and then we'll emboss the next one using the folder. So we'll go ahead and open our ink and we will get started. Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm just peeking over to the comments. I'm gonna to try to keep track of those while I am instructing you. So um, it's great to see you, Hannah, Heather, and Bob. So thank you so much for joining me. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and ink this up a little bit. So I'm gonna move the sample out of the way so I don't get it too inky. And there's a couple of different ways you can use these blending brushes. They're super soft. They're like a soft bristle, they're not a sponge. And you can um, dab it on there or you can just kind of, I like to ink it up this way. And then you always wanna start off your paper because it comes out dark and you don't wanna make it too dark with a big blob. So you'll kinda of ink it up and then get started. So that one came out a little darker, you can see on that one spot. And once you get the ink is there, you're kinda of stuck that's staying with you. So we'll do that. We don't need to ink it up a lot. We could just do it a little bit to give it some texture and it makes the, um, the 3D bricks kind of stick out nice. Probably should have taped down my uh, scratch paper over here. So give it a little more texture. And again, that's gonna get covered by our image too. So we'll just keep going. All right, so my paper's sliding around. <laughs> I might tape it down after we do our embossing once I bring the machine out. Well, that kind of looks cool. All right, so Again, you can keep going and make it as dark or as light as you like. So I kind of like it a little bit lighter. I don't know if you guys can tell on there. Yeah, it gives you a better little look. And again, you're gonna have your image covering over some of the spots so you can decide where you want your um, image of your little house to go. It reminds me of a little European house. All right, I think that's good. All right, so that's kind of how you ink that up. We can go ahead and maybe stamp our our two houses for the card. So we're going to do them the same. I just made a little rectangle square. Not a square, it's a rectangle. <laughs> and um, so we're going to go ahead and ink it up. On this sample, I stamped it on a big square or a rectangle, and then I die cut a circle out of it. This one, we're just going to keep it as a regular rectangle. So when you have a large stamp, you can ink it up this way. Or if it's too large, sometimes it's helpful to flip it upside down and actually use the ink pad on it. So it's really just your preference as to what you like. Now you'll see I've got some on the edges here, which may or may not come on to the image. So if you're worried about some of that messing up your image, you could always take a little piece of paper towel and do that. And then hopefully you don't get that halo effect. I don't think I have that issue normally on this particular stamp, but we'll go ahead and wipe it off just so you guys know how to address that. And then we will just stamp down. Now this is a light image. It's a pencil drawing, so it's not gonna be super dark and that's okay. That's kind of how it was designed. The other thing you could do is if you really wanted it to be super dark, you could always use your Stamparatus and stamp it multiple times. So let's do the second image and do the same thing. Stamp down. And it's nice to let it set for a little bit so it gives the ink time to absorb onto your paper. And if you don't like the image, remember we stamp first and glue second, so you could always flip it over. You have two tries on each, so <laughs> you can go either way on that. Okay, perfect. Just clean that off on the side over here. I have my little shimmy. Okay. So now, let's see, we're gonna move these pieces out. So this is kind of going on that card front. You can see it coming together, but we're gonna go ahead and move these out of the way. I'm gonna pull the embossing machine out and show you how to emboss that piece. So first we're gonna take our embossing folder and there's two different sides. So the side with the Stampin' Up! logo is the side I wanna use and that has the lines. So when you look at the next card, you'll see like the lines are kind of embossed you could do it the other way and ink this up and then it makes like the bricks kind of embossed. So it gives you two different looks. 
I prefer this side. So we're gonna go with that. So that's the card we're making. And the best way to do it is just to drag your ink pad gently across it. So, and it washes off really easy in case you're wondering. So you can just rinse it off in the sink and your ink will come off or you can just use a paper towel. So I'm gonna go ahead, close that up and then take one of our pieces of paper. Now this one, I want the bricks to go long ways on this card. So just gonna set it down. Ooh, that's a little crooked. I might have a crooked wall, we'll see. All right, I have that good. Now I'm gonna get my embossing machine over here. Maybe I should have brought that over first. Now I have to do everything one handed. All right. So make a little room. Situated. So I have the new embossing machine and that uses plate one and the instructions are on here. Plate four is what you use for your 3D embossing folder. Now the other thing you want to do to um, make your plates last longer is to run it through the solid side it should go first. So don't use the open side. It's a six by six and also make sure it's straight because if you run it through crooked, it's gonna wedge into your machine. And you can't use this one on a mini because it is too wide on the mini die cut machine. So you have to use this big one. That little pop noise is normal because it's pretty thick. All right, let's move this back out of the way. And we can see what our card looks like. I think I need a bigger workstation. All right. So let's flip it over. So that's kind of fun. I like that. Gives it a gray rustic-y look. So like I said, you can use your chamois or paper towel or baby wipe. And I'll wipe off some of it. And the rest of it rinses off in like two seconds when you run it under the water. So it's very easy to clean and it doesn't stain it. So there's no worries there. All right, so there is your piece. Let's compare the two. So again, these are gray granite versus the crumb cake that I did earlier. So you'll see, has a little bit different look in the colors. It's more of a, you know, that gray, obviously it's gray granite. <laughs> so it gives you a little bit different look. So let's go ahead and assemble the card. We'll bring our scratch paper back in and we'll just glue these little mats on liquid glue and I like using a single tone it makes it easy to match and it makes this card go really fast too so we're not coloring the image on this one we're just giving it a pretty rustic look and let's make sure I got the card stuff nope all right thought I cut it right. Oh, there we go. That's right. I didn't make it a border on this side. It's only a border on the top and bottom. All right. So there's our first one. Then this time, yep, I got it lined up right. We'll go ahead and put this one on. And you'll see the, um, the one I use, the blending brush, has a different shade the way the, the ink attaches to the card base. So the color changed quite a bit. It still has a cool, cool look to it. All right, so I'm trying to keep that straight-ish. Liquid glue gives you a chance to move things around. And it looks like it's a smidge off. I'm gonna grab my mini paper cutter. So anytime you run into that, you can always run this over and trim it a smidge. And then that way you're good to go. Leave that little guy over there. All right, so now we have our card bases and these are gray granite as well. They're a little bit different than the smoky slate or the basic gray that we have, Here's my bone folder. So that just helps us get a nice burnish mark, keeps the card folded easier. Here's the other one. I partially scored these two to get it started. It makes it easier when you're folding your cardstock as well. So. All right, so one card's going horizontal and 
one card is going vertical, otherwise my brick wall is gonna look really odd. All right, so the liquid glue is great for this because it's textured. Um, if you're gonna use your snail or your um, tape, you'll want to make sure you get a decent amount of coverage so it sticks to your paper. All right. And that gives us our card. Now we can put it on here like this or we could pop it up. And I think I like it just flat. So we'll go ahead and do that. Hang on, let me see. I think this one's a little bit better for it. That one was a smidge short when I trimmed it up. So it always seems like a smidge off. All right, so we've got some glue on there. And you can put it in the center of your card. You can move it near the bottom. I usually like my stuff centered, so we're gonna go with that. All right, you'll have to let me know which brick embossing wall you like better. Um, you could go with the white the way I showed you the first one or inking it up in the two different manners. So let's do that one. Let's put this one on. All right, so as you can see, actually, this is the piece I showed you I, that I already had embossed previously. And when you look, this is what it looks like when you emboss on the other side that I was telling you about. So if you don't emboss, or if you don't ink it up on the Stampin' Up side and you do it on the other side, this is what your bricks look like. I like the lines better, but you could do it either way. Of course, it looks better if I don't stick the glue on it before I show it to you. All right, we glue that down nice and smooth. And then we will stick this one on here. And we've got some quick and easy cards. So this stamp set is quick and easy. It could be a new home. You could put a congrats on there. It can be missing you. The sentiments in here are, um, are really pretty too. I'll have to go over those with you. Let's see what they are. We'll grab the box real quick. There's, I can't thank you enough. Your friendship feels like home to me. I'm always and forever here for you and missing you. I do like congrats because I do have a lot of military friends that seem to move around a bit. So um, I like the congrats because then I can send them a new house card. All right, so there's the two cards. We can put, let's see, get the glue dots. We have the little um, bows. We can add those. I didn't print out any sentiments for this one, um, but we could do that later. You could even stamp I can't thank you enough across there. However, I recommend doing it before you assemble it. So right now I don't, wouldn't want to do it because the embossed piece is under there. So I might do a congrats later. Put a little glue dot on the back of that. Stick it on the corner. And oh, here's the other guy. You can do the same thing over there. So let me know which card you like better, which embossing folder. I'm curious if you like with the blender pen or the blends brush, I should say, or the um, inky embossing folder. All right, that looks cute. Just trying to get the glue dot all the way behind it. All right, perfect. Those little legs work for me better over here. All righty. We can play with that later once I get my sentiment on there. And you can move it around too, depending on what you do with your sentiment. So there's the two cards. All right, now you've got new ways to use your embossing folder. Um, let's compare them. So this is the brick wall when you ink it up and run it through the embossing folder. And then this is using the blending brush on the two with the different colors. And then this one we popped out, these we all did flat. All right, so on to our next card. So the next card will take a little bit longer. We are going to do a little watercoloring with pencils. So I will show you how to do that. To get situated, I might use this when I stamp the image. We'll have to see. Just move that over there. So this is the card. I shared it a little bit earlier this week. Maybe it was today. It might have been today or yesterday. I was sharing the watercolor cards. So this one I did with the watercolor pencils and the paper in the background is from the um, 
it's a host set of paper. So I think it's called Pattern Party maybe. And it has a lot of fun, um, one side is black and white images and the other side's a lot of fun colors. So that is the paper I used in the background. And then the sentiment is actually from one of those many messages stamp set. So um, I love die cutting those in different colors and then punching them all out because they come out in one big piece. So let me show you what I mean. So let's see which one I have on the board. So I use the Stamparatus because it's such a large stamp. And it isn't from this one. I think it's from the other one. But it's very similar to this, and they use the same set of dies. So you can buy the two different stamps and then the dies. And what you do is it's one huge image. You just ink it up, stamp it on your paper, and then I have a little bucket of sentiments. So these are fun. I thought this one would be cute too. I could use on one of the houses. It says happily ever after. So maybe if somebody got a new house after they married. And then the die set is huge. And it cuts out all of them for you. So sometimes I run these through plain white paper or whatever color I'm doing. So for instance, on this card, this sentiment is, um, is this die cut right here. But I ran some white ones. So sometimes you'll see my cards that I used, I think, this week. Some of them used these pieces where I just took a sentiment from another stamp set and cut them on there. And they run through in one shot, so it's great. So after you stamp your image, oh, that's going to the big magnet. So there are some hearts and stars that you line up. You run it through your um, your big shot or you know, whatever die cut machine you have the new Stampin' Up one, and it'll cut them all in one shot. So that's what I love about it. So I did some in red, some in black, some in gray, and uh, that's a great way to do your sentiments as well. All right. So let's get our pieces for our project out talk about our different ink. So we have two different black inks. One is stays on, which is our permanent ink. And it's um, when you use any kind of aqua painter or water coloring, this is the ink that you would use. If you're using our alcohol markers that are called the blends, those you have to use the black memento ink. And you can't flip flop the ink because you get a smeary mess. So you wanna make sure you use the right ink for the project that you're working on. So you'll see here, these are some of those many messages dies that I just was talking about. I have a bunch of little skinny ones that I went ahead and um, die cut all at one shot. So I'd have them like a little stash of those. So we can take our sentiment that comes with the stamp set. It says, I can't thank you enough. And we can stamp that in our regular ink. So let's see which one this will fit on. That's a little snug. That one might be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink it up stamp the sentiment on here. All right, might have to stick my head in the camera. Hopefully I'm on the paper. White on white <laughs> isn't the best. Ooh, that's crooked. All right, let's try the other side. Let's see. If not, we just won't glue it down and we'll do it next time. Oh, that's a little better. The other thing you can do is um, you could stamp first and die cut it after. But there we go. Now, the one thing that um, takes a little more work on the stays on is you have to clean it differently. So you have to buy a special stays on cleaner and then you have to clean it, um, your stamps after you use them. So I will show you that. The other thing, since we're watercoloring, it's better to use, we have a couple different paper choices. So we have our normal basic white that you guys have seen and we use all the time and it has a great gloss to it. So it's beautiful for stamping, but let's see where it is. Is it under specialty? I think it's our specialty paper. Oh, basic paper, here we go. So the different papers we have, so we have our normal, oh, it's at the top. So we have our normal cardstock and the basic white and vanilla. And this is the normal 40 sheets that you usually buy to to do all your stamping on. But when you're watercoloring, I recommend either using the shimmery white, and we're on page 136, or the fluid 100. And they are very different cardstock, so I'll tell you a little bit about those. But they're made to absorb the water, so they definitely will blend the ink better than if you try to do it on basic white. So this is our, I don't know if you can tell it in the camera, but the fluid paper is texturized. So it's just like if you were at Michael's and you were you know, watercoloring 
for an art class. It's textured like that. So you don't get a super solid image. You know, it, so you may want to use your Stamparatus if you're stamping onto that. Or just make sure you get a good inky image on there. But since we're not using aqua painters, which are these guys, so this is our aqua painters. You can use the ink from your ink pad on a block or on your lid and add water and color with it. And I'll show you that card later at the end that I did that. But for this card, we're going to actually use the shimmery white. And again, white on a camera isn't the greatest, but it does have a shimmer to it. It's a little bit of glitter. And that one is really good for the blender pen. So this is our blender pen. So we're going to use that with our watercolor pencils. So let's go ahead and ink up our stamp. So I'm going to try it without the, um, and this one's a lot darker to the ink. So I'm going to try it without the piercing mat underneath and see how it goes. All right. So now that looks like there's a good bit of ink on there. We're just going to stamp down and then you want to let it set for a second to absorb the ink. And then you also, um, want to let it dry before you start watercoloring on it. So we'll just let that be for a little bit. All right. Let's see how it came out. All right. That looks good. So you can see it leaves a lot of ink on your, on your, um, your stamp. So we're going to go ahead and move this out of the way and I'll show you real quick how to clean it. So we have this well, that way while it's drying. <laughs> so we have stays on cleaner. You shake it up and it has like a weird little sponge end and you will just kind of run it over your stamp. Otherwise your ink is not coming off of this. You can try to use your stamp pad cleaner and stuff and it just isn't going to happen. And then you get a paper towel. You can absorb some of the black off of your tip there. Now it's grayish black. Close it up. And then you just dab your paper towel on here and you'll see a lot of the ink starting to come off. So it's a little more work to clean, um, you know, your ink pad when you're using stays on. It's also good for stamping on glass and, um, some of the other, like I've stamped on picture frames before to decorate the edges. So stays on has lots of different purposes. All right. And you don't want to let the chemical sit too long on there. So we'll go ahead and use our regular cleaner after that's done. So I use my stamp and scrub afterwards when I'm just regular stamping, I'll use my chamois in between things. But for now we'll go ahead and use this with our regular stamping mist. I think I need more. There we go. And then you can use the little scrubby plate. Check it. And it's good for conditioning your stamps too. The stamp and mist is good to clean them when you're done for a bit and you're putting them away. And then you can see we're back to clean. All right. So now we can do some stamping. We've cleaned our little stamp. All right. So let's get the sample card out again. And I'm not the best watercolor, so I'm still learning um, blending colors and things like that. So we're going to start with basic gray and we're going to kind of do the background. So we're just going to use that on the brick wall and you just gently color it and you'll see the lines, right? So you're like, eh, that looks okay, I guess. But when you use the blender pen, it really blends things together. Pretty cool. Now, some people do circles, and it might be a little easier to blend, but I like the little straight lines. So that's kind of what I use, but you can experiment when you're working on your projects and see which one you like best. So let's do a little bit up here above the house. You can kind of see it. I'm trying to see if you can see it on camera. All right. I want to do a little bit behind the tree. Where's that? Oop, off my paper. And so we're just going to keep, and you can layer, um, you know, as you, just like when you watercolor for art class, 
you can layer on, you can come back once it dries and put another layer and shadowing and all that. But I'm not, uh, that's not my thing. <laughs> so I want a pretty image, but um, I won't be here all day adding tons of layers and things. So we'll do our coloring and then we'll do our blending. And I'll show you how that little blender marker works. All right, I think we're good there. Um, let's do the green. So this one I'm using the old olive in the garden green. And I'm just going to combine them. So this one I'm going to use the swirly. Fancy swirly technique. And again, you can do this image solid like we just did on the last card if you don't want to fuss with, you know, coloring. Although it do, does give you a lot of different looks, you know, as you're working through your projects. And it's relaxing. Some people do like to color. So it's a fun way to go. Some leaves down here. You don't have to be precise. <laughs> it's kind of meh. And we're going to layer some things. So let's put some bright green. Now this one's kind of bright green. So you can decide where you want to add that. And it'll blend in once we use the blender pen. So... Let's see, this one, I want this one to be more green, more bright green down here, and a little there. So we don't have very many shades of brown. So, oops, that's Cajun craze. So we're gonna use the early espresso very lightly to do like our baskets and our floor. And I'm gonna leave some white space so maybe it'll come out a little lighter. So we're gonna use it on the planters. And then we can add a little shadowing with the Cajun craze and see how that comes out. And again, you can add more or less later. Let's see, what do we want to do next? Oh, I need a little more green probably. The tree's looking a little naked over there. We'll see when we blend it if we want to add more. Okay, so now we're going to do the ground. And that's a little bit... Oops, I went a little too far up. So I think I'm gonna just do this little angle here. And we just do some more coloring. And you know, if you have like sharp point or dull tip on your pencil, it gives you a little bit different look. You can press lighter or harder to get the different look. Go behind the tires. I always forget that. All right, so now we're gonna do the gray again on the door frame, but we're gonna do it darker. So that gives us, make sure I'm using gray. Sometimes the colors on the pencil don't necessarily look like the ink, but they have a little name on there. So you can use that to make sure you're using the right, right color. All right, so I think before we do any more coloring, we'll use that blender pen so you can kind of see what it does and how cool it looks. So it just blends. And like I said, I'm not an artist, so I thought the cards came out pretty decent considering mom is the watercolor painting person in the family and not me. <laughs> okay, so there's two tips. They're exactly the same. And they have, um, they're not water. I'm not sure what is actually in there but it gives you a blending look. So you can use the same one for different colors. You just clean it off in between. So let's start with the browns. So we're gonna use the brown and use that to blend the colors together. And then, like I said, if it's too light or too dark, you can wait till it dries and try to add a little more in there. So that looks pretty cool. And then we'll do the brown floor on the ground. And you'll see it makes such a difference in your color. And you can drag the ink out a little bit further, you know, as you go. And then you can layer on more. So if you decide, oop, went too far, you can take your pencil back out there and blend it a little more. And if you do circles, that kind of gets rid of my lines if you don't want those lines anymore. So you just kind of play with the pencils a little bit and you'll get a feel for them. But they're a great value. There's three in a pack. And like I said, I've had mine forever. I think it was like 
four states ago when I bought them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they are, they've traveled the world and they work well. And they have long life in them. Okay, so then when I'm done with that color, I rub it off on my scratch paper to get any color off. Now it's gonna stay in the tip a little bit. It was white when I started, I haven't used that tip. So here's the new one, it's all white. And then when you use it, it'll get stained, but as long as you clean it off on your paper and it doesn't leave any residual color, then you're good to go. So let's move on to the greens. And now I probably could have um, done a light green, blended it, done the dark green, but I like to do it at the same time. It saves time and it gives you kind of a fun look. So add some more greenery at the bottom and a little more here. Now I like, I don't like doing it upside down. All right, and then here we're just going to, and I think this is a little faster. I don't know, maybe the watercolor with the aqua painter is faster, I'm not sure. I feel like the pencils were faster because I did both. And I felt like this one was easier for beginners um, to blend colors and things than the aqua painter. If you're brand, brand new, these are very forgiving and you can do a lot with them. So what do you think? How's it look? You guys like that? Again, we'll clean it off. And let's see, we'll do the gray. So let's do the dark gray. We'll kind of blend this in. And some of my colors, I um, there's only so many to pick from, so you kind of have to look and see. And you can do shadowing too, which I forgot to do on the, um, the ground, but there's a white pencil in here and you could use that to shadow things. So for instance, um, if you wanted to tone down, like if the brown before I blended it was really dark, you could do the white over the top of it and then blend it and it'd be a shade dark or a shade lighter. All right, so let's do our stone background. And again, I'm all for fun, but easy. So I think this is fun and easy to do. And you'll have to let me know what you guys think. Oh, hey, Susan, I'm glad you could join me. Yeah, I don't think, I think that people forget this blender pen exists, especially after we had alcohol markers come out and they're all so cool. Um, people forget about our watercolor pencils. And they're pretty by themselves, but this really makes a world of difference using the blender pen to give you that smoother finish. Now you can use these watercolor pencils with the aqua painter also, but I would recommend, um, you could probably do it on here with a light amount of water, but the watercolor paper that I showed you earlier would probably be a better pick than the shimmer paper. I like the shimmer paper just because it's glittery and who doesn't like glitter? So you can use this for regular images too. It's a little bit shinier. All right. So if I decided I wanted my image to come out a little more, I could do some more gray over there, but I think it's good. Otherwise we'll be here all night. <laughs> all right. So let's do a little bit more pencil so we can do our window and some, let's see, daffodil. So we'll do our window and you can see you don't have to fill it in and you don't have to be pretty. The alcohol markers, you have to be a little more precise when you're using those. And then for the bike, we'll use the balmy blue. Now, if you look, that does not look like balmy blue. So you have to be careful and read your ink colors. And it is pretty dark considering balmy blue is a little bit lighter. So I wonder if that's a misprint, but uh, it says balmy blue on there. So there's too many little lines. I'm just gonna highlight the tires are gonna be blue. It's a blue bike, everything. I didn't wanna mess with the black because then it makes it too dark. But there's a there's a black in here. You could do that with the white layer. I think the blue just gives it a pop, plus then it'll match my paper. So my background paper is actually, I think it's uh, that misty moonlight is that background paper. But once you start blending things, you know the colors and the shades change a little bit. So. Let's see. You can throw some colors on the spikes if you want. All right, I think that's good. It gives us a little pop. So what's left? The door. 
So we could do a red door like I did with the blends, but I find this Calypso Coral is kind of a cool peachy pink color, and it looked really pretty with the color combinations on here. So we'll do the same colors we did last time. And the image has some shadowing, so you can come back through and add it darker on there. Um, once you put the first layer, layer down of your pencil. And then I'll show you how to assemble the card. And I like tearing paper. Stamping up paper is pretty cool for that. You'll see the white edge. Our designer paper is two-sided, and it's just such good quality products that it gives you such an amazing look to tear it. All right, so maybe a little dark there, something there, maybe that side. All right. There we go. All right, let's use our blender pen again. So we can do the bike first, blend it up. And the tip is pretty fine, so it gives you a good image. Try to stay in the lines best I can. But again, it's like a watercolor look, so it doesn't have to be perfect. A little too much there, so I can pull it off with your pencil. And let's see, do I have all the pieces? All right, and then now we'll move on to the door. Just make sure you clean it between or you'll end up with some weird blended colors. And then we're almost done. So. All right. I think I want a little bit more color, so it's still a little wet. Yeah, it's not gonna take the ink just yet. So you may just let it sit, and then you can add a little more dimension on there, like I was talking about. You can add a little more dimension on your um, basket. So if we want them to be a little more orangey on this side, we can add a little more. And then you can just leave it that way, or you can use that blending brush. Um, or a blending marker, pencil, whatever it's called. Blender pen. Okay, so there's our image. You can see I went a little darker on this one. I pushed a little harder with the marker to get a little bit di different image. Oh, I didn't do the yellow. That's why it doesn't look as pretty. There we go. So that looks better. Look at that. All right. And actually, there's a little bit of orange. I need a little more right here on the door frame. Okay, perfect. All right, there we go. All right, so now let's do a little tearing. So we're gonna wanna put it there. And the last time I ran some twine around the edge, I don't know if we're gonna end up doing that or if we're gonna center it. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so to tear your paper, you just wanna start in one spot, and get it started, and then you just do it unevenly. You can put your finger there depending on how much of a zigzag and whatnot that you want. Try to make it in a straight-ish line, but again, it's a paper tire, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, let's see if I have enough of that off. Well, that went flying. Okay, I think that looks good. So, we'll go ahead. See, this paper has all the black and white on the other side. And it's fun, so many different things in Stampin' Up! Coordinate. I mean, they make products that coordinate for you, but you can mix and match so many other sets and still have fun coordination, even if it's something that they didn't initially uh, bundle together. So it gives you so much versatility with all your products. All right, I think, let's see. This time I think we'll pop this one up and center it. Ooh, new pack of dimensionals. You are be so cool. All right, so when you're using your dimensionals, you have to take the sticky back off. So they're sticky on both sides, so they're stuck to the, the backing. And stick to my finger now. And then you can just put them along the way. Mount them up. Um, we also have that really, th um, the sheets of dimensionals, I guess they're not called dimensionals, I forget what they're called but those work really well for uh, popping up. So if you wanted it to be totally solid and it doesn't little cave in, 
um, so this might get squished a little because there's some pieces that don't have dimensionals. You can put a solid piece of that foam backing that we have on there as well. All right, let's see, is that even? Ah, I think that's pretty close. All right, and then we can take our sentiment and we can pop that up as well. That one was really crooked, so we'll go with the other side. And I should have probably brought the minis. They work a little better for this guy. But that's fine. And I think we'll just pop it right there. All right, so that is how you watercolor. I'm glad you like the card, Susan. And um, I don't know if anybody's tried the watercolor pencils, but I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun and it will give you hours of fun to use on your different stamp sets. Now let's compare the two cards. They're the same backgrounds, but um, you can see I did it a little bit different. So this one looks like it might be a tad darker. I went a little darker on that and then I followed back up on you know this one to give it some more shadowing. So you can do it to whatever your taste is. And again, you can put some more twine on here. You can drop some embellishments on there. So lots of great um, different ways to use that. All right, do I have anything else I wanted to share about these cards? So let's take a quick look at the cards we made. So we did our watercoloring and, well, let's move this crazy paper. It keeps going crooked. Crooked makes me crazy. Okay, so there's these guys. And then we did the embossing folder where we inked it up. And then we used the blender brushes to do that one. And then when, the ones we actually made together were these gray granite ones and the crumb cakes were the samples. And I popped up some sentiments on those. So um, lots of fun things you can do, different things you can mix and match. So this is the end of the showcase for the Feels Like Home stamp set. Next week, I will be focusing on the penguin suite. So let's take a quick look. Where's my little celebration catalog? And I'll show you the paper. So I've been mostly, right now, the samples I've been making mostly focus on the paper, but it does have a coordinating stamp set and punch that are so cute. So this is another item you can earn for free when you spend $50. So during celebration, which ends September 30th, you can earn this fun paper. And I do have it to show you. Let me grab it. Move some stuff out of the way real quick. So here you go. It is hard sometimes to tell in that teeny little picture, but these are so much fun. And if you like to fussy cut, you can fussy cut them out. You can use them in whole sheets for your card fronts. So you've got all these images. So the one side is a pattern with like a solid. And then the other side are fun animals. And you could use these for fall. You can use them for Christmas. You can use them for birthday. So they have non-traditional Christmas colors. I mean, the green is, is Christmassy, but you know, the pinks and the purples, um, not as much, but it still gives you a fun, different look. So this one has the little animals. So you'll see lots of fun samples this coming week using this paper. So make sure you check back to my Facebook page every day. I'll be sharing a project. And then next Sunday at 5 p.m. Central, I'll be back again to make a couple cards with you. And I will probably let you know what technique or thing we're doing. Um, here's another fun little pattern. And then this one has the dots. So you can see that could be birthday, that's snowy, it's trees. I mean, this is masculine even. So lots of versatility in your paper pack. Now, the other fun thing is the stamp set is versatile as well. So you'll see there's lots of different pieces to do your penguins. And the punch punches out the penguin. And that's his white piece, if you're wondering what the mermaid fin is. So it cuts that out and his little foot, which could also be a tulip. So this guy lines up with the one, well, there's two of each sheet, but it lines up with the penguin on this one. So you can punch all those out with your punch as well as anything you stamp. And then this stamp set is photopolymer. So you'll see it is a clear one that you can put on your blocks. I was playing around with this. This is, I was trying to make it look like an iceberg or some kind of icy like snow kind of thing. So trying to get some ideas. So I hope you'll be able to join me next week as well. 
and take a look at all my fun samples I'll be sharing. Now, if you're interested in any products, feel free to um, log into my site up top and you can place an order for any of the items that you've seen that you're interested in. If you need help, feel free to message me and I'd be happy to give you a hand if you need you know, to narrow things down. Again, we used a lot of stuff from, let's see, let's flip our catalog back. So we did use a lot of the special tools which are kind of fun that get overlooked, or you may have them in your stash and just never knew what to do with them. <laughs> so here again is the blender pens. They are $12 and you get three. And then we use the stays on ink to watercolor with, and you'll use that with your aqua painters also. And they are probably on this page too. Yeah, there's your aqua painters. There's the blend blending brushes we use today as well. So lots of great products. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you guys know is my, I have, um, Stampin' Bingo, which is going to be virtual. So we'll be doing it on Zoom again, and we will um, feature some Christmas cards. So we'll be making some Christmas cards, and all the prizes will be out of the Stampin' Up! catalog. So make sure you save the date. I'll be posting some more information on it this week, but it will be October 9th on Saturday at 5 p.m. Central. Um, it usually runs a couple hours, so it'll probably be five to seven. So make sure you put that on your calendar. I hope you'll be able to join me. And again, I'll post it on my events tab. So at the top of the page, you'll see um, the stampinbutterfly.stampinup.net. And on there, I put any of my specials going on and then the calendar will have any upcoming events. So I'll be updating it for bingo shortly. The other um, upcoming event I have is my card class to go. So the last one just went out in the mail and it featured the elegantly said bundle. So the new one will be fall and it is gorgeous. So we will be using the Pretty Pumpkins bundle and the black, I think it's Blackberry Beauty. Let me show you the paper in the catalog real quick. So if you're interested in my next to go class, it includes $20 or, $20 or more of products as well as um, two cards each. So you get eight cards designed. You'll make a total of eight cards. And I didn't tab the page, so now I gotta remember what page it is, there it is. And then it doesn't include the stamped images, so you would have to buy the stamp set and punch or dies, or you could use what you had on hand. But the products that'll be included in the kit are these gorgeous paper. And it is Rich Razzleberry, uh, Blackberry Bliss, Early Espresso, Cinnamon Cider. It's so really pretty for fall. And then you'll have some other products in your kit. If you want to see more information on that, that is already posted on my events tab, so you can RSVP now before it fills up. Um, I do have a quick sample of the card if you're interested. So here's one of our fun folds we'll be doing. And the card base is actually Blackberry Bliss, but the camera doesn't always do it justice. Sometimes it looks black. Um, but it's actually the dark purple, and you're going to use the foil. And then it is a fun fold. So it stands up like that. I had a little glue dot. I was trying to take a picture of it. So... Um, you'll have some fun embellishments as well. So this is one of the cards you'll be making in next month's class. So if you're interested, please make sure you check out my website. Um, I thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope you learned something new and you had a good time. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye.